Alright, I think we're live. And pretty much good to go. This might be a little bit loud on the music, just let me know in chat if you're watching it live if it's too much. Good afternoon everyone, it's 3pm uh, here in Chicago, Saturday, February 26th. My name's Elvin, also known as Poxy. Today we're going to be uh, doing some coverage for the final week of the C-Log Conference North season for Illinois Tech Esports as they take on St. Olaf College. Um, was, we did not get a live cast last week as, for me personally, I was um, unavailable. We do have some raffle files that I might, if I time willing be, try to just do a separate offline cast and just get all of our season games there uploaded onto our YouTube eventually. Um, but let's just jump right into it, kind of just go over the roster for those that are tuning in for the first time. So again, today, against St. Olaf, and for the season overview right now, the Hawks are currently, you know... Um, two and three for the season. So this will be their last game of the six games of the Swiss format. Unfortunately, because they have more than one loss, they will not be moving on to the um, conference playoffs. Uh, but regardless, you know, this is normally IIT. We just never been able to make it past that point. But, you know, as a young team, they still got a lot to learn. So let's learn about some of the players. We've got uh, Joseph Avershoe Haskins to top lane, David Biggest Big Boy Federer Vicius in the, as the captain for the jungler, Thomas the Swag Turtle Wagner in the mid lane, Jacob Schmoovy Bode in the bot, and then Heather Fear to Poor Worth as support. Um, varsity season again, Illinois Tech this uh, year seated 38th, St. Olaf College I believe somewhere in the upper 50s. So IIT does have the advantage here, they will be playing blue side here for their first game. Um, so we'll have to keep our eyes on to see if, uh, maybe the Hawks will try some new stuff or keep to the, you know, to keep to the basics that we know that we have seen for the first couple of games of the season. For the lineup for St. Olaf, um, actually I can just tell you right now since my league's client's open. So they're doing picks and bans right now. It looks like they've got Chosen Bubble, Dunkaroos, Nurmdil, Kitten, and Peptic, uh, Dunkaroos being their captain. Um, I won't take too much time to go into the um, player profile since we've kind of done that multiple times. But again, average show, we get third year studying uh, computer science. Biggest big boy, second year studying computer engineering. The Swag Turtle, first year studying computer science. Shmoovy, first year studying artificial intelligence. And then Peter Poro, fourth year studying chemical engineering. And then they've got their sub Louie. No information about him. And then I think we had our staff. Pirate, Bajorque, and Blitz. All right, let's jump into pick bands. Already things have pretty much started. IIT once again taking the blue side. It will be the supports getting knocked off right from the get-go. It's going to be Thresh and Nautilus taken away, taking those, some of those hook champions out. And then uh, looking like IIT left a third band o open. They just didn't opt to go for one, unless that's a visual bug from my end. So interesting play i'm not sure that's intentional um but 
There's been a couple changes since we've last casted. Um, there's a new champion out on the rift, uh, Renata Glask. Uh, extremely broken. My new solo queue will ban on site. Um, lots of CC with some of her abilities, a couple of slows, empowered autos for her allies, and then her main awesome shtick is an ultimate that essentially sends her allies to attack each other. And, you know, if you're, you know, we, I uh, experienced the wrong end of that in a play where I was against a Renata in one of my matches and we were, you know, hiding in a bush. They must have had vision or just uh, a really good prediction and the Renata had thrown it right over the Dragon Pit and captured all of us and then we just ended up losing the fight right after. So definitely uh, very powerful. Okay, I see the Renata pick and I could have sworn that it's not allowed. I don't know if C-Law has approved that, uh, because I was just talking about it. I didn't think Renata was going to be played. Um, hold on, I actually want to check for confirmation before we get in trouble. Am I crazy or not? Like, I thought that she wasn't allowed to be put into play. Okay, I'm sorry. So she is not eligible to be played in Sea Law matches until February 22nd. So since today is the 26th, she is totally eligible to play, which means okay, she's on the board and she's gonna be nasty for sure. So that's gonna probably be going to Fear Pro for sure. With the Botling Jinx is pretty pretty exciting. You could see some potential playmaking by trying to push the people into traps. Maybe I'm, I don't remember if her ability is able to take champions as well. I think it does. I could see some potential play, but we also have a um, some other new champs on the rift. You've got Zeri there for Cho that got picked up by Chosen Bubble. Um, and on their lineup, they've got the Zeri, Zinjao, Nami, and now Ari picked. And as for their bands, pretty diverse portfolio there. They've got the Vagar mid, Camille top, uh, Gwen top lane, I believe, as well. Yumi bot lane, and then the Hecarim jungle. And then looking like they took the Zin away from Biggest Big Boy and just put it on for Dunkaroos. IIT will finish off their last two bands with the Darius and Aatrox. Right now, Shmoovy hovering over a sign on top lane, it looks like. Um, which will leave the mid lane as the last pick. We've seen Corky. I'm not sure if that's going to be... What, if uh, the Swire Turtle's kind of just going to go for the comfort pick, or... You know, maybe flex out some um, different champions for this kind of less aggressive match, probably, that we'll be expecting for today. And it is going to be the victor mid they're picked up, which will leave St. Olaf with their last pick hovering over a set right now for the top lane, it looks like. Or Cho'Gath. And it's going to be the Cho'Gath, so IIT's lineup, Scion there for Average Joey, Udyr will have biggest, uh, Udyr for biggest big boy, Victor for the Swire Turtle, Jinx on the movie, which we'll, we've seen, I think, at least for three games here this season, and then Renata Glask, very exciting pick there that I'll have uh, some interesting time to cast. Meanwhile, St. Olaf, Cho'Gath there for Chosen Bubble, Sinjao and Dunkaroos, Ari for Nurmdale, Zeri for Kitten, and Nami for... Peptic. Twenty seconds until we hit the loadout. We are on a two-minute delay on top of the three-minute spectate delay, so we're gonna go on a quick break when we come back. Game one on its way. Thanks, everyone.
my gone. Alright, spectate delay has expired. Should be jumping into games pretty soon. And there we go. Okay. Uh, logos look pretty good for the most part. Okay, so IIT will be onto the blue side. IIT's last few games of the 2022 C Law Conference season. Both teams have worked pretty hard, made it as far as they could in the, for the spring season. We'll have to see if one team here will be ending 3 3 for the season. So, right there at that 50 50 mark. Standard approach here for all five. Members on both sides, all of the entrances covered. So no fancy invades from the looks of it. Renata going to be going with the Relic Shield. I don't think she... You build her, if I'm not mistaken, kind of like an enchanting mage, I thought. She's definitely not meant to be tanky. All of her attacks are ranged. They're not melee. And it's definitely like a zoning champion kind of style. It's something... The way I was treating her in my one game of solo queue against her was kind of like a brand, you know? Like, once they her abilities off CD, you can kind of just have the confidence to go in. But, you know, it's definitely the, definitely the most annoying thing about her kit is just the ability to kind of deny a quick kill with her uh, bailout um, infusion. So... We'll have to keep, definitely want to keep my eyes on that in terms of level 2, level 3 kind of fights. Meanwhile, Average Joey and Chosen Bubble are going to exchange a couple of blows. Here to Poro, getting the Q out. It's going to, again, for a quick readout of the ability, the handshake will root the enemy, and then she can recast it to pull them in whatever direction she so chooses. So It's almost like a Syndra, except... Um, you can actually grab champions. Alright, why is my camera going like so? Uh... Alright, I'm Mr. Joey. Send it out a couple blows here. And they will trade it out. I forgot what my buttons do in terms of trying to uh, fix the different champions around. Sorry. Okay, so Shmovi and Fudoporo here, level 2, pushing up this lane. Nothing too exciting just yet. Take a look at the junglers, you've got Udir doing pretty much a full clear here of his bot side, now moving on to the top, and his last camp would be this blue buff now. Zin going for a little bit of a different route will leave his Krugs open. Um, which will mean that he might be just a little bit behind the Udyr in terms of his clear speed. And that will be Big Spade Boy hitting level 4 pretty fast. Get the quick stun to remove the shield off the scuttle. And we'll go swiping away at it. Paint missing paint sent out from Olaf as they get to read that Udyr might be around the area. Dunkaroo is going to come in for an invade, but he will find nothing as Udyr has already done a full clear. The Swire Turtle pushed pretty safely under his turret, should you be just fine, but could be a tribush gang, could be the first fight that we see here. Pain coming out, looking like they do want to commit to this. Fear Poro does have the bail ability coming in. Movie is going to get that stun flash play here, but that's not going to be enough to just get you finished. Only buys a couple seconds, we see the bailout ability used, but it is going to be the first blood there for Zeri. Well played from Olaf, uh, St. Olaf, uh, catching IIT unawares there. And unfortunately, a nice little bubble there placed by Peptic will ensure that CC is well in place. First kill there for Zeri will be able to net her easy 500 gold lead. She's going to use that advantage to get herself the longsword, the sheen, and the dagger. 
Is that a Triforce build first item then, perhaps? Uh, could be. Meanwhile, it's a Swag Turtle going to be... Taking his first back from the looks of it. Average Joey. So we have still training a couple of bullets. A nice little CS lead built up from Average Joey is not something you normally see. Taking a decent amount of minion damage here. A silence will definitely keep Joey pretty low now, and he's got to be a little bit careful now. Cho'Gath had already taken the time with his back, which is what gave it gave Scion that lead to pick himself up the boots and cloth armor. And now it will be Abishoi's turn. He does no, not sure if he's going to use the TP to get all the way back to the lane. There is a new gear there to kind of catch the wave if necessary. It is going to be the TP played here. Cho'Gath had opted to walk back. Which will be the TP advantage there for St. Olaf. Meanwhile. Bot lane. Not too much action. Likely gonna just have to be waiting until Jinx, you know, as we've seen Shmoovie play to play it before. It's, it's kind of just waiting to see who, uh, for Shmoovie to kind of get back into the game. Couple of vision problems here for Dunkaroos is going to be using the eat it dash. Will get the slow onto Dunkaroos. Shmoovie placing the trap will keep the Nami off at bay, but it's going to be pretty healthy. But Renata gets a nice little hook. Might have to force this area to flash over. Nice little play there. We'll have a valuable summoners there. Lost Jinx still had her flash not flashing out from that Zin gang. Meanwhile, Ari and Dunkaroos coming both down here. Shmoovie will see them. Ari will use her ultimate to start things off. It is going to use the flash to try to avoid it. Will dodge the charm. Renata buying some time being able to push out to Ari. Very low here for both sides of the bot lane here. The Swag Turtle coming into the fight. But biggest big boy, no flash stun available. Just only has to go. Is going to use the smite to uh, secure some minion tax there uh, for, for IIT. But that'll be couple seconds until he's gonna have that smite back unfortunately and it should be up now but it doesn't look like any side's gonna go for it he'll just be using the second smite to quickly clear off these krugs and just go back to whacking for some jungle camps still anyone's game you know even with even with the seating or whatever Olaf showing some signs of good proactive play don't catch them out just yet Count them out. I said catch. Uh, another silence from the Cho'Gath was able to just pretty much just straight up deny Average Joey from that cast. It's pretty nice channeling there. As he pretty much just constantly silent will keep himself pretty healthy with the grasp. Get some health back. Biggest big boy looking like he's trying to aim his eyes towards the play here for another first kill there for Joey though. Sorry, I'm thinking, looking at this play here from Biggest Big Boy as they try to attempt to take the first dragon of the game with this arcane. Now IIT showing some signs of life here. We'll be able to secure themselves the first dragon to Swag Turtle. Pretty low on mana. Gets the idea that Zin might be around. Maybe opting for a back here. Given that information, though, Dunkaroos is going to know that Rift Herald should be pretty open right now. Not too much to worry about. No, all members of IIT on their top side and jungle head back, so this quadrant completely open for them just to take the Rift Herald for himself. And Udir likely might not even check. He might just go straight towards one of his camps from the looks of it. You know, that seems to be able to play, so. Let's keep our eyes still on for level 6 play for that hostile takeover. I want to see the Renata get some big playmaking potential there for team fights, for 2v2 dueling. Definitely keep our eyes on for that. Level 6 there. We'll have the level advantage above the Nami. Does she want to force anything? Zin not inside. Oh. Oh, I thought they were able to clear out ward. I thought they both autoed it. Alright, well, no action in the bot lane just yet, but Biggest Big Boy getting the flash off from Cho'Gath, but still will be able to land that stun, should be a kill. Biggest Big Boy, well played there. Just using the Ghost will be able to net him that kill. The Swag Turtle, nice little sidestep of 
dodging this charm, and we'll be running right into an Udyr huge ultimate from Victor. Can they go for more? Ari will have all flat, all abilities with her ult uh, charge to get out of flash here from Biggest Big Boy, but no, again, no smite to be able to kind of, uh, excuse me, no splash to be able to kind of secure him anything more than that. Biggest Big Boy could be running into trouble, though he, oh my, to commit for the play, ignite play from Nuremberg will have to kill there, and Biggest Big Boy now in trouble as he's caught off, but was able to capture the scuttle. A valiant effort, but... Just a little bit of vision control issues there, I think, and then I think an ego play from the Swear Turtle, unfortunately, as he tried to go for an all-in. Um, but Ari, with her ignite advantage, is just able to win out that 1v1. Victor had used his ultimate here earlier, right? But it, I don't think it got too much value just because Ari had all of her dashes. We're now getting a nice little CC there on Kitten, but we won't see too much more. It's taking advantage of the Nami, moving all the way back to the Tribush to get the reward. Nice little side sub movie, looking for more. Slow will not land from the power W. Rift turret will be placed down to chunk the turret now down to just under 1500 health. And IIT will have the leads, I think, just based on solo play. But you know, there's something to be said about the team play. It seems pretty even right now on both sides. So we're gonna have to see, you know. Winosh movie needs some time to be able to kind of build herself into that hyper carry kind of style where just she can just square up with anyone she so chooses. Silence will not be able to stop the smash from Joey and he'll be able to get some good damage there on Chosen Bubble. Another Q will be sent out. Cho'Gath right now. Just shy under 1k health. Dunkaroos walking right up into here. Could be trouble here. Abishoi is going to clear the ward, commit himself for this. He does have the flash available and is going to be able to land his ultimate Udyr coming in here. But could they go for more? Land will be able to go for the kill. The rocket will land, getting Jinx to assist, and that's going to be two quick kills. Nice rocket being sent. Biggest big boy wants to look for more. That W will graze him. Get some health back with this uh, honeydew fruit or whatever it's called. But nice play from Jinx. Rocket at full distance will be able to land and be able to make this Cho'Gath a very unhappy mutant, unfortunately. Nice play. So Hawk's still in it. They, they're they kind of being able to navigate out these kind of unlucky positionings. Right now, Ocean Drag spawning in about 40-45 seconds. Limited vision right now across the river. Ari taking using her own lens, three lenses there for Olaf as they uh, try to get a play set up. Victor and Udir coming down here. Uh, Scion with his TP available. Cho'Gath will not have his. So is this a 5v4 fight? Will IIT commit for it? Ola Scion does not have his ultimate up for this dragon fight if they start it right at the get go. Scion hovering it right now. So we're going to have to see how this play starts off. A little bit of synergy. Nice trap will land. And that should be the kill. Shmoovy getting empowered pretty quickly. Walking right into an Udyr charm. Ghost being used here. It will be biggest big boy running right after the Ari charmers. But the Spire Turtle caught in the middle. Won't be available here for this. Scion is going to be coming here from the bot side. Dragon has spawned. 30 seconds until Scion is able to get that ultimate up. Cho'Gath going to take the time to just go for the tower, it seems like. So, play here from Olaf. Play here from St. Olaf will be to uh, give up the drag. Give some time for Cho'Gath to catch up a little bit. Get up whatever plating that he can. And Biggest Big Boy definitely needs to get some MR, I think. If he's going to be chasing after R for these kind of plays. He needs to be able to last against like all of those Q's and W's, but the uh, uh, Q's and W's being the orbs and the fox fires that she's going to be sending out. A little bit more specific. Uh, five sec. Uh, fourteen oh five will mean that the uh, plating has now finally expired. IIT able to get like two or three plates here, maybe one plate here and two or three plates there. No first towers yet. This is a three-man top here play from Sion. He does have the ultimate available, but they gotta go for the body block if they want to try. Sion is gonna have to try to navigate. It's gonna be using it pretty early. I don't think it's gonna be enough actually. So 
Sheldon's too much damage to him for him to take the Stride Throw just really too late, unfortunately. And actually, Shogun's gonna flash just to make sure he doesn't get hit by any of those Scion autos. But yeah, this, this Victor pick definitely doesn't seem as familiar of a... Oh boy. Oh, Rocket will not be able to land, but it was close. But yeah, this Victor pick, you know, I talked now that I'm talking about it. I, I, I'm... I think just in a pure 1v1 matchup, it just doesn't hold too much value with against Ari. I think because of her ability to flash out of those, or to, to be able to dash out of it with her ultimate, you don't really have too much luck in trying to keep her locked down in one place, right? So using it against Zin would be the optimal play, I think. Chosen Bubble coming here all the way around as they try to make this play here. Trap should be able to keep him stunned, that he is not going to be having a good day. Trying to go for more, one more auto should do it. 274 gold for the Udyr. And Shmoovy looking a little bit dangerous here, as uh, he's able to continue to kind of push up his lead. Does have the Kraken Slayer, and I did confirm, yep, Trinity Force there for the Zeri, but Zin now wants to kind of help even out the score here for St. Olaf Esports, and is looking at a potential gank here. Ward will be able to spot them out. They've got to run for it. The wave will capture Shmoovy. He's going to have to flash out of it. How will the Hawks get themselves out? Flash play to try to force himself through this, but the exhaust will not be just enough. The uh, jailbreak, not enough either. And that will be Gla Renata Glass' first death there for IIT. And Zin providing so much for Olaf's spot lane to just keep them inside the game. And definitely an MVP right now for his team. Scion, though, is... Continuing to try to try to be as much of a nuisance, try to keep this chosen bubble, you know, not give him any advantages, which is important, you know. Right now, Cho'Gath is just not tanky at all. He's um, pretty weak compared to like what we normally expect, and so in a late game situation, though, you know, he's going to be able to build himself up to that point. So it's kind of all on the hands of IIT, kind of see how they can pick who they want to go. Big, biggest big boy, take the spear. To the face. No big objectives on the board just yet here in the bot side. Zeri will be going with the back to finish up her level 2 boots. And pick up the, uh, uh, that's a misclick, right? Two long swords there, looks like. Uh, maybe a fourth. No way. Essence Reaver? I don't know what you build into Zeri. One minute until this Cloud Dragon spawns, but he's going to be taking his power back. He will have a Rift Herald to place, likely here in the mid or bot lane. And then Scion here needs to make the play, just needs to decide if he wants to be in for this fight. He will have the TP available, so he's going to try to keep this Cho'Gath away as much as possible. Blue team will be able to take it. Oh, biggest big boy. He's going to commit for this Flash being used to get herself over the wall. Big misplays here from IIT as they have members fall left and right. Members caught. Let's take a look at that. I was talking about Scion, but like, what is happening over here? This is disappointing, you know, for 20 seats above, and IIT cannot hold their ground against us. I'm not sure what's happening. Is this an ego play from Shmoovy? Just. What? Yeah, you've got the tower over here. She's okay. So it's just an aggression from Nurm build that he knows that he's so ahead that he can just take it. So yeah, that's just to me that's just Shmoovy not having awareness of one of the literal most oldest champions of the game and how her burst potential is. So uh, that's an unfortunate thing to see. That should be probably an uncontested cloud drake from the looks of it. We're gonna have to see what advantages I have. can take in the meantime. Olaf will opt grab the red buff. But that's that's gotta be the communication. I don't know if it's just the members of IIT just not wanting to go for stuff, if that's them just not like respecting the opponent. We'll have to see. So biggest big boy running for his life. Running right into the Scion, they will be able to see it with the ward. 
Dragon will be placed. Scion in position for a possible ultimate, but he's got to do it pretty soon. Dragon already at 4.8. Kelly, this could be some pretty big kills if they commit. All right, Scion playing at a half speed just because I can with the caster buff. And it's a gigantic ultimate to chunk down Zeri by 400, 500 health. We'll win the smite fight there for Biggest Big Boy. Let's see how they close it out. Jinx will be going in for Dunkaroos. Scion so tanky he's able to hold on for all those members. Anything more that they can go slow there for the Jinx. One, two, one more auto would, could do it. But they're running, going to be running right into a Cho'Gath. They've got to play themselves out of it. The Spark Turtle is going to be able to get the kill. So they're able to finally win out that dragon fight and get some gold finally back into their pocket. Big turnover events. Just a coordination play that finally worked in IIT's favor. Uh, they just had five members. Olaf only had four and they tried to commit to a dragon too early. And uh, Zeri was the one that ended up taking the brunt of that ultimate. I'm not sure what the coordination was there. Playing a little bit of a half uh, double speed just because this is just some kind of minion warding here. Watch as these kind of players just try to jockey into position. Scion, meanwhile, going to be pushing his way through this bot lane. Looking like he should be able to make short work of this bottom tower. Just waste the time. Waste the time of the uh, of St. Olaf right now. Renata is going to have the Shirelias. Yep. Kind of going for that enchanting build I just mentioned. So it's not really her job to be tanking at all. That's going to be the Udyr and Olaf. And Udyr taking the advice, getting himself that Negatron cloak. Going to have some MR built into his kit now, finally, to be able to handle himself against that Ari. You know, don't be, don't be confused. That Ari is not like a pushover. She is decently ahead by 800 gold against the victor she has potential to 1v1 jinx as we just saw jinx still a glass cannon she's she is deadly in the fight but she needs to have her team there to help her get there you know it's a cannot 1v1 uh necessarily this jinx olaf wasting a little bit of time here as they kind of just mingle around here in the river Sy chogath will not be able to stop you know scion indefinitely it, it's only a matter of time. Right now, the Swagger just holding on. They are going to be running into this. He's going to get charmed and hit by the full slew of Ari abilities, but is tanky enough to only dip the health pool by about 500. And IIT limited in their vision. They just need to be careful about walking out here. They don't have anything seen right here. Dunku is going for a big commit wave. Will land on the Swagger, but it's not a lot of damage right now. Big ultimate from Renata to keep those members at bay for a little bit, but it's one for one right now. Biggest big boy still alive at the moment. The jailbreak will not be enough. Moving these to try to see if he can find something. Charm will land from the Ari. Anything more. Right now, I believe a two for one in Olaf's favor. But to me, it seems like a vision problem. Scion using the TP to get into the fight, but not too much value before Olaf just pulled out instantly. Still has his ultimate available though, so unfortunately just yeah, it's just I I the victor pick is not I am actually not the biggest fan of right now. I I don't see too much playmaking potential. The zoning hasn't been what I wanted to see. They're not really fighting um optimally with the victor, at least be able to utilize all of his damage yet, in, in my opinion. And then Jinx is just yeah, just doesn't really have the ability right now to kind of have the confidence to kind of just go in right now none of her her champion her her team can really only cc them they don't provide any buffs to, you know to empower uh to really empower her besides the uh what well, they not a passive right so it's up to kind of iit to line it up for jinx to be able to get some good damage they gotta get the early picks out if the zin you know the zin was definitely going for an early dive so he did end up falling so that's pretty much the way that Jinx has to, they kind of got to pinch your point their way through it. Uh, not too many of it, not too many kind of like side, sideway approaches just because Udyr is kind of just like that walking menace. It's not going to have too much potential. Biggest big boy walking right up into here. A little bit of CC in here, but he's still pretty healthy. Charm will land. Renata ultimate will have these guys delayed for a couple minutes or so. Flash play here for Biggest Big Boy, they're going to look for more. 
Rumi coming in here, but beautiful, very low, will have to knock up the three, have to force the flash out, cannot go for more, exhaust will come out, and Scion is left alone to pick up the pieces, and he will not be at all in this fight, what the hell happened? He used his ultimate to just get to the fight? Oh boy, that's... No, just, it's a numbers game. Uh, it was just a numbers game. I, they, the, the Zin is tanky with Death Dance. He's got the Stride Breaker for the health. Merc Treads. There's just not enough damage here from IIT. Jinx cannot pump it out just yet. Too many enchanting abilities to keep to keep St. Olaf healthy with the Nami. A lot of zoning with her Wave and Bubble. And it will be an even gold, you know, across the board right now. INT definitely not playing their best today. You know, even even with the CS lead that I thought that uh, the Jinx had developed, all of these kills that the Zarya's just kind of getting by being enabled by her team is just pushing her up. 1.2k here for the mid lane. Like, the Corky pick was up. Like, why... Okay, never mind. It, I'm gonna just chalk it up to they're trying new stuff out, so let's just YOLO it. Um, which is fine. Can't fault them for that. Sending some vision out here as they try to set up here for a Baron play. The Swire Turtle just trying to keep up right now. He's got the Lunacy, he's got Lich Bane, but, you know, already, already has a decent amount of items right now. Any chance for a potential play Udir and Scion are gonna go for it with the chosen bubble getting a full knockup should be pretty quickly removed Nami ult will not land her too much benefit here and now IIT wants to change it back here to Poro coming in here will be using the ultimate to kind of hold it back but that's not gonna be enough damage Zone is gonna stop watch will buy a little bit of time to Swire gonna have to come all the way around and they're just pretty much shoehorning him in Jinx will get very excited off of that play, and that will be 2 for 0 right now in the Hawks' favor. Finally, something working out for them as they try to close out this game. Average Joe is going to be walking right up to not uh, Nurmville, but should be tanky enough to take it all in. Zeri definitely not built for tank shredding, really, with this Black Cleaver Triforce, Trinity Force. You know. And it will be the Baron power play here for the Hawks as they're trying to, let's see how much gold they can get with this lead. <sighs> Sorry, I changed a couple of windows. Summoner wise, TP there for Swag, TP there for Joey, TP for Chosen Bubble. To me, the winning condition has to be either Udir and Scion just wailing it on an unsuspecting member 2v1, or Jinx having to be able to live throughout the entirety of the fight. The 5v5 fighting has to be Jinx, is the playmaking potential. It has to be. So, Peptic looking around here for a wave, but not really too much of an angle to approach here. Don't lose coming back all the way around. Meanwhile, top side is going to be average Joey just taking the time to use these powered minions to push up his tier 2 top. But Ari's got decent wave clear, it's not too big of a deal right now. Don't cruise looking around for something. Renata doesn't have any wards available. Pretty closed off in terms of what's going inside the jungle. Olaf doing a pretty good job of that. Dunkaroo is going to take some time to grab his blue buff. Tier 2 now finally unlocked here for his top. Biggest big boy and average killer pushing there to themselves through it. Forcing Olaf to make a choice now. No wave finally coming in here in about 5 seconds. Olaf uh, going to look like they're going to opt to just give up their top turret. Uh, the play here, average Joey is going to go for it. He is able to get that turret. Let's see how the fight starts off. Wait, was that an Ari ultimate? She, that was an Ari ultimate, my lord. Okay, she's gonna go for it. Flash play here for Dunk Cruise. It's not gonna be enough damage. Charmed here from the Olaf, but he's gonna be tanky enough to take it all in. 
very isolated on her own. Distractor going for the 1v1 using the ultimate. Ultimate Cloud will not be enough. It's just not fast enough. But Olaf, uh, why do I keep saying Olaf? Scion in the meantime, soloing this top in hit. Going to be able to unlock it for himself. Another turret here taken away here. Jinx going to go pretty big on it. And that will be two in hits. IIT getting so many resources, at least a 3k gold lead just from that Baron power play alone. Now 52.6 to 47k. IIT being quick, 20 seconds until the Claw Dragon spawns, we can go way down through it. And yeah, good, good on uh, Udyr to build. Very good for him to have handle himself against the Ari. Even the flash play from Dunk Drews in the last bit attempt is just not going to be enough, unfortunately. And this will be the Cloud Soul here for the Hawks, and that is going to be really nice and welcome for these guys. Cloud Soul in this case, for those that don't know, gives the 10 movement speed and additional 50% movement speed after using that ultimate. So these are going to be some very fast boys uh, all around. Especially the Sweeter, actually. I think his ultimate is the Phoenix, right? Ability, so he's just going to have... Does that count? Like, to just have that, like permanently like fast then on top with the bear buff he is looking mighty dashy with that 480 movement speed does he even have boots oh he does okay. <laughs> i was gonna say like <laughs> wait a second oh biggest big boy he wants it dude do it do it do it do it do it do it oh okay he spooked us in a little bit it moving in to just close out some vision inside his blue jungle jinx and victor will take care of it here on the bot side looking like sign wants to just put the pressure now on the mid you've got top minions coming in to collapse probably within a minute by their base so iit no baron buff here but they're starting to close in around olaf here nice charm here for renata she's got to be very low it is going to be used to jailbreak will unfortunately keep her out of the game the strike turtle very low forcing himself to flash out they don't have the damage just yet no is very low scion coming in all the way around flat exhaust being used for nami is not going to be enough flash here being used flash here from Zeri. flash there from average joey and udir as they keep going big boy big boy is a steamroll cannon but chogath kills off the jinx and it is now a 3v3 i believe Kitten still pretty big. Average really does have to armor, but it's not enough. Will finally be able to finish her off in a 1v1 situation. A little bit too much than they can chew, but IIT having these top minions finally collapse is going to be taking these Nexus turrets to just under, just about 1k health. And Olaf will live to see another fight, which will probably be the Baron. Uh, I don't know how the Jinx fell. Could have just been everyone just ignoring the jinx and, and and it was probably just scion and udir just powering through and and shmovie's just like team team please <laughs> yeah it's just renata she's not built to help her adc directly it's it's really like you you, you can't heal her you, you can only kind of just set up plays it's, it's a it's a zoning champ at its at its definition To me, it's like it's just it's just like Brand, right? Brand provides no healing for his team, but like just the amount of damage that he can output in fights to kind of ult his ultimate just to kind of stop anyone from getting too cocky about moving right in front of him. That's that's why you play the Brand, right? So I I, I put kind of that same category except in a enchanting type here with Renata is kind of the is kind of the outlook I have for it anyway. Spear will end. This Renata is pretty squishy. 1800 health, not too big. Meanwhile, Ari gonna wave clear through these minions. IIT needs to needs to pull the trigger pretty soon. They need to they need to be pretty committed on how they want to do this play right now. Right now, they got one or two more super minion waves coming in through. You know, so how do they want to get their waves through this fight? They know the Chogath is left alone at the top, and they're trying to fight for some vision in here. Doing a pretty good job of keeping the the riverside clear. Scion closing it around. You have these empowered minions coming through. They wanna, looking like they're gonna commit uh, Olaf all the way here to the tier two and to keep them away from it. So Olaf, Sion trying to do what he can. Nice little dodge from the Ari, but he's tanky enough. He can he can handle it as long as he can keep the Ari at bay. That's the play here. Two control wards will be enough. 
enough to stop them. IIT once close it in. Biggest big boy coming in for the play here. Ari ultimate uh Jinx ultimate will be able to get the kill. Ari already instantly down. Resurrection here from Sinja with the Guardian Angel, but that's not gonna be doing anything. They're gonna finish it off and Olaf and Cho Olaf and Sion clean it up into their back line and credit to average Joey and biggest big boy for being MVPs of this game. I, I definitely the bot lane performance not as uh, you know, carry centric as we normally see in this case. I think just um, the Zinjiao putting a lot of early, early game dedication, and the Swagger will not have the best performance in the mid, but it's okay with just his zoning, kind of keep everyone out of the game. Teamwork is the dream work. 65k to 55.5k victory here for IIT. Close game, very close game. Very, very good proactive plays from Olaf. I was uh, very surprised to kind of just see that level of playmaking that they had. But but in the end, it's just kind of um, a little bit of macro play out of their control and, and kind of just spiraling it into letting Udyr and Sion stomp over that poor Cho'Gath. Kind of just made it to a point of no return. Okay, I'll just give her invite. Point ready. Take a quick check at the damage if I can. If my V client just decides not to bust itself open, uh, hello? Anyone? Bueller? Man, small indie company, am I right, guys? <laughs> uh, okay, I can't. It's not showing me anything, so sorry, I can't see the most damage right now. Okay, I'm gonna try one more time. Okay, you just have to look at these numbers and just assume who's who. I'm gonna just assume Shmovi is like Jenks and she did. Uh... Oh wait, it is an LCS order. 14k, yeah, it's just non-existent. Just not too much damage coming from her. Is that Renata damage? That's insane if it is. Uh, MVP, yeah, was the Zin and Ari for for uh, for them. Okay. Pretty much as I expected. It was. Uh... Hold on, let me get the uh, client back. So the window decided to die die on me. Team one, give them the nice one to know. Yeah, no biggest big boy, average Joey, average Joey finally you know able to um, show his strength and not get bullied <laughs> for once, showing signs of life that he can hold out on his own against that show gap. So. Good on him. All right, we're going to jump into game two. Looking like IIT is taking the blue side once again. All the better for me. And I'll put some side music on it just to have something going in the mean background. And let's see if IIT is going to miss a third man again. That was the strangest thing I've ever seen. So my opinions on Renata on that fight. I think 2v2 dueling was better than the team fighting, which is kind of at odds. I thought I would see Renata being way more impactful in the team fighting, but it seemed like either Olaf was having to read on her, St. Olaf was having to read on how to play against her, or or some, or maybe just in a team fight setting, IIT just didn't have the kind of setup that they were looking for to get Renata really big. But IIT gonna change it up, taking the drinks out play here and locking into Zeri for Shmovi himself. Meanwhile, IIT going for, uh, excuse me, Olaf going for the similar bands as we saw from Game One, I believe. Hecarim Jungle, Yubi Bot, Gwen Top. And that's going to be another bot lane pick. Lock out the ADCs, and that's going to be the Jin for these guys. Jin works great, by the way, with like Taric, and but it also gets countered by Bard. I wish. Can we see a Bard game? Right, I'm going to say it. Play Bard. <laughs> Uh. 
That's my that's my uh That's my old school coaching. <sighs> nope, it's gonna be the Renata once again for Frida Portal. This time for Zeri Again, both of like the new two of the newest champions from IIT uh from Riot Games out on the rift here on IIT's hand, so looking like these guys have been putting it into the practice though, so Shifting from practice to application here for a seawall game, though, is what we're gonna have to keep our eyes on. And old Saint Olaf is gonna respond to that with a little bit of aggression with that Leona support pick. And um, to be fair, I think that's the right way to do play it. You, you um, Leona can pretty much just one v one any ADC that she so chooses. You know, with just that burst of the. Sword, the auto, the stun, and all. And then, uh. Sejuani! Another tanky pick here. Dunk Roo is just trying to play to kind of be the, the, the lone solitary man for his uh, team to kind of take in all the. take in all of the damage. Oh no! Okay, yeah, INT just leaving another ban out. I don't know why. I, I, I'm praying that it's a visual bug on my end. I just have never seen it, like, why they would willingly just leave a ban open. But I don't know, maybe it's just me. I'll have to ask them. Meanwhile, Victor being removed here for the Spire Turtle, meaning that uh, he's going to pick up the Rise there. And then a Urgot top? Do it, dude. I love to see it. I want to see I want to see Average Joey just dominate this game against St. Olaf and finally be like, you know what, I'm done getting shafted by like these top tier teams by that just keep lane diving me and bullying me in the top lane. I'm just going to 1v5 you all now. And that's the kind of play that you can do with Urgot for sure. So, uh... Good for the young strapped man to uh, lace up his boots and uh, show off some of that Chad playstyle. That's what I want to see. Meanwhile, St. Olaf will round out their picks with the set top for Chosen Bubble, and Nurmdo will pick up a Vagar. So that's going to be very spooky if uh, he lands a cage on any of those squishy members like the Zeri or Renata for sure coupled with the Leona ultimate plus like a CC to boot plus a Sichuani tank that they won't even be able to bust through could be very dangerous for uh, IIT if uh, St. Olaf kind of plays on a select play style in terms of picking one person zoning everybody off and then just bursting them down with that Vagar Jin uh, for sure but IIT has the tools to kind of go for the dueling aspect. I think if they go for the 2v2 fights, the 2v3 fights, the 3v2 fights, those are where IIT can shine to kind of push their lead ahead. So I want to see, what I want to see in this game is definitely some solo kills here for sure. I want to see IIT see if they can use their wits to kind of push it through. All right, three minute spectate delay. And we'll be nearly there, guys. One, uh, potentially one more game to go. IIT Hawks, one to lead. We'll be back.
All right, welcome back. If you are just tuning in, looks like my mic's working. Looks like desktop audio. Why, why is my music still on? Uh, you didn't hear that? Okay. Blah 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 blah. Welcome to the game Ring. now. Okay. We're good now, right? Okay. All right. If you're just tuning in, you would have seen IIT, or if you were tuning in before, IIT just took their game one victory here against Saint Olaf Esports. Moving now on to game two. IIT will once again be on the blue side. You're going to have Average Joey on the Urgot. Biggest big boy on the Udyr jungle that we saw earlier. The Swire Turtle with a little bit of a change here with the rise mid against Nurmdil here with the Vagar. Meanwhile, Kitten will no longer be on the Zeri main. It shall be Shmoovy. And we're going to see the Renata Glass swung. once again here by Fyodoporo. If I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure this is her Fyodor Poro's last year. Don't quote me on that. I think actually no, take that back. I'm pretty sure she has one more year. But um, one of the the oldest member, I believe, of the uh, IIT roster. So we'll see how she uh, ends up leading her team to victory here. She's gonna have the heal summoner ability up. And they're going to know that Udyr was left alone by to uh, fend the red buff by himself. And Relic Shield once again there for her. Keep our eyes on that level 2 Leona. It's going to be all in to see who shows off that early game aggression. Meanwhile, Urgot and Set. You know, Average Joey having a pretty solid performance against that Shogath, I believe having one or two 1v1 victories under his belt. Renata, get him in the will not be able to land that hook. That's a little side step from the chain. And Renata will have to carry on her kit. Excuse me for the yawn. Oh. Oh, you can see their abilities. Mana Biscuit, Ring, Transcendence, Scorch. Can I just keep that as a permanent window? That's way more useful information. Alright, level 2 in here. And nice push away from the Renata. Alright, that's how you do it. Now I know how that ability works. Nice play. What? And the cooldown of her... Handshakes is 16 seconds compared to the Yona's 12. So, Yona will still technically have, you know, a four second buffer technically in between the abilities. But, uh, on that Zenith Blade. But that's like absolute min maxing to the point where, like, that's high level gameplay in order to play like that to, like, keep track of your enemy CDs and know, like, every single one of theirs. Smile. Everyone is watching. As you can see, I think Fear to Portal's just keeping that ability available. Right now she wants to make sure she always has a handshake up to prevent Leona going all in, I think. So if, you, if playing it right, she shouldn't be using it as a zoning, like an initiation tool. She should just be using it to counter a Leona all in. Hold on, the Swire Turtle, first blood, how did we do it? Uh, Udyr is getting very low. Oh my god, Flash. Oh, that Vagar's gotta be mad as fuck. Alright. That's unfortunate. But unfortunately, when it comes to chasing Udyr, it is one of the, like, ten commandments of things that you can never do. Just, just under, never chase Singe. It's, you will never catch Udyr. One of the ultimate laws of League of Legends. You inspire me. So first blood for Rise will be using that 500 gold to pick himself a tier, some boots, a ward, and a tome. Peptic playing a little bit of division game. Through my work. Transcend. 
couple of rooms here from Olaf as they got Sichuani and Vagar here inching their way down. And here's the commit. Peptic will be able to land it in. Flash to get herself out of that situation, and that's going to be a valuable summoner there. But it will only be Fudaporo, so not the worst of things. Meanwhile, Nurmdil taking very low against this rise. Flash you, flash me to get out.
tank here. It might not work. Turret plating will soon fall.
team's turret has been destroyed. This turret has been destroyed. Kind of this play. We got to use his TP super early. That's a pretty valuable summer loss for Vagar. Dragon Soldier for the Hawks. Sorry, I completely dozed off. Like, literally. <laughs> uh, so that's uh, not bad. It's been a very long day. Or a long night. Which isn't an excuse, but um. Maybe. Is my mic on? Yeah. 
Sorry, I was able to briefly with that. So I had to finish all five of them. Tower tried to get themselves out of it, but they got able to tap them onto the cage. But this is a uh, 15k gold boot for these hawks. So they to put the steamroll through their backline. They are just don't have enough stacks to be dangerous yet. And that aggression play that he did trying to flash on the Renata is just foolish, I think. 176 AP is big, but not compared to a 230 res. Jesus. Fair enough for a while. Just scrambling for vision right now. One three one. Yeah. Saint Olaf's only saving grace is trying to fight his five man. Right now none of their guys can handle themselves. One v one on other one here. Basically both in the round. Oh that's ultimate. Will not land on anyone besides just a Vagar. And he'll be able to get it out with the ultimate. Delays them long enough. It's gonna be Vagar forcing his TP out to him. And they're playing it pretty methodically. Oh, we're not if you had your ultimate here to open that. Let's say, uh, Dunk we oh, got going in big, 1v1 here between these two wet noodles. But yeah, let's just watch these guys and have some fun with it. Look at this mortal combat to the deadliest. But, Revere shall prevail. Oh, root! Oh, Joey, do it to him! Oh no, but Oh my god, Joey, you are actually insane. So pray! Bad lad. Oh boy, it's a bonk. Vagar doesn't have ultimate. Oh no. Oh no, he's trying. He's running. And this has just gotta be a formality at this point, right? Oh nope, they're they're gonna they're gonna go for it. Alright, he's gonna try his darndest. But alright, now now it's game right? please. Yeah, I apologize. Game two, I um, literally dozed off keyboard, but whatever. It's gonna be 22 to 9, 58.6 to 40k gold. Pretty dominant performance from INT. Or got showing up big. Okay, again, Lee Klein is bugged for me. I'm sorry, can't really fix that at the moment. But from looking, from what it looks like, uh, KDA Urgot showing up big. Um, six zero and seven, I think, might have been Udir, Rise. <coughs> Excuse me. Also pretty big on the CC score. Then then looks like Zeri was able to handle herself just fine. Okay, we'll go for the final interview of the uh, 
of the season. There's me. Okay, so today it's going to be Megas Big Boy in the jungle. And if my stats are right, he is a second year. And then, so let's just bring him in. Hello? Hello? Hi, afternoon, David. Delvin, can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you just well. Okay, so we are now finished for the uh, Sea Law North Conference season at the end of the sixth week. Congratulations on the nice 2 0 victory against St. Olaf, which will mean that you guys finished off the season 3 and 3. Not too shabby for a lot of first uh, year players, right? So, kind of talk to me, give me an introduction about yourself in terms of uh, for yourself, what year, what you're studying, and then how you're involved in the league team. Uh, I'm David Fedorovich. Uh, I'm studying computer engineering, and this is my second year here. But uh, I'm planning to graduate uh, 2023 or 24, depending on whether I want a bachelor's or master's. Um, what else did you want me to comment on? And then just what you, you know, your background with League. How long have you been playing the game, I guess? Because I think this is uh, our first time talking together, right? This is your first interview. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I started playing the game late in Season 7. And, like, my friends introduced me to it. Like, just as, like, hey, this game's pretty fun. So I just, like, looked up a bunch of videos on it. Didn't really get too hardcore into it. But then uh, the role that stuck stuck out to me the most at the beginning was jungle but uh like around two years ago like i started branching out into like every lane just because i started liking to play like any champion just as long as they were like had something fun or unique about them and um right now like there's a lot of like different pigs you can play like in all of the lanes so it's pretty fun just like playing a bunch of different champions i hit diamond for the first time last season and then i also hit masters as well in uh, preseason definitely congrats on those i <laughs> for some reason we i everyone's peak performance in their uh, league career tends to be in college for some reason it was me too i hit diamond my first time in when i was in school as well which is kind of weird at the same well maybe not weird but it's always kind of funny where in an institution where you should be like studying the hardest you're also playing the hardest as well and um so tell me when your friends introduced you was this just like friends from different schools or were you part of a team in high school or before coming to iit have you had any competitive kind of team experience in league before or was it just solo queue mostly with friends um it was my friends from a high school the only time i did like something competitive besides from a clash with my friends was uh one time I did a uh, LAN at uh, Woodfield Mall in Schaumburg when they still had the uh, tournaments there. They the were hosted ones. by Microsoft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, we did one of those too as one of our school teams when we just like ended up going. We did the one in Oak Brook, but, you know, we were playing on the equipment they provided us, right? So the peripherals, like playing on a mouse you're not comfortable with or a key or a laptop keyboard you're not comfortable with is a completely different feel i don't know did you have equipment over with you guys or uh no we played with the equipment that was in the store mm -hmm. and it was kind of scuffed because like <laughs> like we, we were 5v5 like and we were facing against each other so we could just hear each other's comms mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then um yeah they kind of just like, put you in the back room where they have like the kind of movie theater place yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's how like, it was yeah, just like Okay, they're, they're here, guys. They're here. Oh, wait. <laughs> yeah, no I, no, I totally get it. Okay, no, um, that's cool. You know, so I guess then in, a, in your first kind of year or first kind of time in a competitive space, you know, what have been the big differences that you've seen when it comes to kind of playing by yourself versus playing in a five-man coordination, you know, not just with your teams, but also, you know, how have the opponents and the competition been than what you expected? Oh. Um... Mainly it's just, like, all the champions that you're playing against seem like they're uh, trying to accomplish a goal more so than, like, them just playing to, like, carry or, like, um, 
do something by themselves. Like, you'll have champions, like, coordinating all their CC together. And in solo queue, mostly, they, like, play a lot of, like, high damage, uh, flashy assassin champions or bruisers. Like uh, Diana said, Yone, stuff that can one-shot you, but it doesn't really work too well when you can uh, coordinate CC against those champions and shut them down. Okay, so yeah, definitely, definitely, I think in a team setting, I agree, you know, it's, you're not going to be seeing too many, you know, 1v9 comps per se in a, in a, in a team setting, you, there's ways to fight around that and there's, and, it, and that's why you kind of play in a team comp where all five champions are working together and coordinating abilities. So kind of on that on note, that note, take me to the St. Olaf game where game one, it seemed like they had the upper hand for a little bit in the early game with some of their playmaking with a lot of the Zinjao ganks in the bot lane and 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 Shmi will be having a tough time there. Talk to me, what was the kind of uh, reaction that you got from them in that game one? I mostly played for top, I think in the first couple of levels, just cause Cho'Gath having Predator in lane just is kind of troll. You can't really contest the enemy top laner if you're taking Predator, especially in top, like in mid, you can kind of get away with it, because you can walk to lane like using the Predator, but the walking the top uh, with Predator is like a lot longer, just because of like how much distance you have to travel. Um, the main way how Zen got ahead was because he had some really weird pathing, where he walked around the ward like through the entire jungle, so he burned a lot of time like getting his lanes ahead, but I spent that time instead uh, full clearing, um, mainly playing to get myself ahead, and then converting that lead using like objectives, and then uh, playing for Drakes and uh, team fighting around that. So it seems like the play was, you know, normally I think early on in the season we saw um, average Joey when he's in the top ends up getting bullied quite a bit with a lot of dives, a lot of 1v2s, 1v3s, and even the supports coming all the way up there to just kind of zone him out of his tower. But in this case, for both of these games, I think you and him had some really uh, high moments where you guys were able to get him ganks and get him pretty nicely ahead. So did uh, was his, how are his... Uh, how are his vibes? Was he finally enjoying being in the driver's seat for once <laughs> in the game? Oh yeah, I mean he, the the champions that he like uh, picked this game were more of his uh, comfort picks, I would say. Like he he seems like really comfortable with picking the Scion and the Urga, and seems good with the matchups that he was uh, playing. So uh, being comfortable with the matchups is really important with. Um being able to like win the lane and then convert it into like winning the game for your team. No, definitely. I think, you know, having the comfort pick is always good, but I think especially for a young team like you guys, you know, it's definitely going to be important as if you guys keep playing together for the next year or so, like to keep, um, you know, expanding the champ pool, you know, even though you might have like those comfort picks, I know like, um, uh, mid lane is uh, what uh, the swag turtle Trail like has, he has his like quirky comfort pick and 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 I I know and and uh, Nar we saw a lot in the top lane I don't I'm not sure if that was a comfort pick or that was just based on the comp in those early games during the conference but definitely playing more and more champions is always good just to make sure you guys have a flexible roster so that way when the enemy kind of just bans you out it doesn't leave you with scraps to fight for. Yeah, I agree. So, I guess um, let's just round it out with some of the end of the year goals. You know, what was at the beginning of the season, you know, when you guys talked as a team, what was the goal? What was the expectation? And now at the end of the conference season, do you guys think you met your goals? Both uh -huh. as a team and individually. I think our goals probably were to just um, our to get into the playoffs for C level since since uh, getting I think it's one or two losses like Noxio you it's really hard to be able to get into the playoffs. So um we 
I'm not sure what our final standing is because I think some of the games are still being played out. Which it's can... it's uh, three three since you had losses against St. Louis, Purdue, and uh, I think Wesleyan. I think there's like a like a rank score based oh, on like so you might have um, some more games. Yeah, win okay. losses okay. and then like enemy win percentages, but I think we'll also be uh, doing the Teemo Cup, which is like all the teams in Seattle that didn't make the playoffs. So, I don't think the season's over just yet, but I think we've accomplished a lot of what we've been, um, like, striving to do in these games. And in the season overall. Okay. Yeah, no, I think the conference season's definitely done. I, unfortunately, no, the the way that it works out is you play six games and you guys went three and three, so that doesn't move you past. But now with the Teal Cup, there will still be some chances for competitive opportunities against other schools to be fighting for the RP prizes, which will be exciting. I IIT, we usually, sometimes we do it, sometimes we don't traditionally. It just kind of depends on what the team wants to do. But, um, you know, Teal Cup will give you guys more chances to practice and, and continue trying to do stuff out. So I guess... Uh, I think we can wrap it up here then if there's uh, any last minute shout outs in terms of uh, anything you want to say on stream before we close it off here. Mm, I don't have anything that I would personally want to shout out. Okay, that sounds good. Well, uh, David, thanks for being able to join in and um, congratulations on today's 2-0 win. And uh, best of luck for you guys for the uh, rest of the uh, postseason with the uh, Team Cup then. All right. Thank you for the interview. Sure. I'll move you back to the room. Okay. That'll do it for us today, then. Um, IIT predicted 2-0, and uh, they pulled it off despite some kind of early little bit of shortcomings in the game one. But, you know, game two was pretty much a stomp fest, 15K gold lead. So we'll close it off here. Um Again, we I'll see if I can get the Purdue game covered, but I'm a week behind, so I don't know if the newest league update will allow me to play the file or not. If not, sorry about that. Um, just unfortunately, just we don't have too much of a staffing for the events. It's really just me, so I can only do league, and I was limited last week in terms of being available. So we'll try to see what we can do in the future. Um, again, GG's to Saint Olaf. Um, IIT will finish off the conference season three three. Thanks for watching, everyone. Have a good day.